Welcome to Voicecraft. This conversation welcomes Adriana Forte and Guy Sengstock for a dialogue in response to themes of masculinity and femininity as they relate to each other in the context of profound interaction about what matters. The topic of the feminine has been discussed in several sessions in different formats in the Voicecraft network, conversations which Adriana has played a leading role in bringing to fruition as just a small part of her broader calling. As I see it, and these are my words, shared in an attempt to express the respect I have for her being in the world, part of Adriana's calling seems to be to speak on behalf of aspects of the feminine which are typically misunderstood and underappreciated in a variety of cultural settings, so that contexts for participation that feature efforts toward interpersonal connection and understanding can be more conscious and enabling of a broader spectrum of energies, roles and cognitive styles. Joining Adriana and myself for this conversation is Guy Sengstock, founder of Circling, a global authentic relating practice, and a singular philosophical being who is a uniquely delightful presence to sense, think, and understand with. This conversation is the first in a public series that will feature many voices, though it's preceded by years of effort made on the private-facing side of this project to engage and understand these themes and seeks to support that ongoing effort to engage broader participation in the coming to consciousness of respect for these energies, as embodied in ourselves and others. These are really deep and difficult waters to navigate and name. It's the kind of topic for conversation, and ultimately, living dynamic, which is never complete and endlessly attracting, repelling, clear and confusing, partly because each of us is comprised of a nature and set of tendencies that include both elements of feminine and masculine, yin and yang, which themselves twist, turn and change over the course of our development and take form in varied and concretely different physiological attributes and biological imperatives, while the psychological aspect, depending on one's appreciation for this or that theory of the psyche, from Freud through Jung to name but two progenitors in the West, carry sometimes entirely different background assumptions about the nature of what is. What are the connections between sexuality and spirituality? The human as animal, the human as reflective participant in orders of intelligibility that transcend and include animal, the human as evolving participant expressions of organismic process unfolding over eons that cosmically and comically outstrip our pop cultural memes. We're all of this and more, eh? And maybe you don't like this language and its connotations, preferring something a little more conceptually precise. Well, good luck. Across language sets and symbolic orders, from metaphysics and mythology, sociology, biology, politics, activism and culture war, history coloured with technological and environmental adaptation, laced in the concrete real of the struggle to exist, Alongside eras of suppression and rigidity, and through to our moment now, not only are these concepts perennially featured, but chances are you'll meet a man or a woman, and I heard sometimes they don't communicate so good. And if you think how we treat ourselves and each other is kind of important, then maybe the deep currents we're already swimming in are worth taking time to understand, or at least relate to with a little more appreciation. Okay. Here we go. Well, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. I'm here with Adriano Forte and Guy Sengstock. First chat Guy and I have had in about a year, and it's the first time the two of you are meeting for a, a dialogue together. Although, Adriano, I know you attended a session that Guy was present in. And I do have a sense of the themes I'd love to discuss today. And I think it would be interesting to open them up together and share a little bit of who you are into that fold so I think if we, if we begin with some of these themes masculinity femininity how these relate to authenticity what it is to express these energies what it is to be expressions of these energies and I think particularly as well at least speaking for myself the, the the challenge it is to sometimes even use this language because it's not altogether clear what these 
energies, what these dynamics are and what they mean. And they can be known and well, they can be known and used, I think, sometimes in different ways to mean a whole range of different things. And so this is a little bit of the let's say the the orbit that I'm hoping we can go on together. Mm. Might begin um Adriana by by um asking you if it's not too much to jump in immediately and we can go wherever you like but if it's not too much to ask why is it that it's important you think to discuss to talk about to bring some of the dynamics of what the feminine means for instance in relation to the masculine but perhaps we could begin with the feminine what it means to presence the feminine what it means to um, become more conscious of f the feminine and, and femininity in culture at the moment and maybe if it helps um, if there's a particular thread this topic has had or developed ha as it's developed in your life that might be a way to go about it because this is something that's close to your heart and close to many of the conversations we've had and so why is it interesting? You know, why are we sort of here in some sense trying to broach this at all? Mm. Thank you. Um, I was firstly appreciating your care in, in addressing if it's not too much, if it's okay. And a side of me goes, yeah, it is too much, but I'm up for it. And it's, it's a bit too much in the sense of like, I don't even know how to address it. It's a massive question. <laughs> but I'll... I'll um, I'll just start by saying that um, well, I loved how you, you expressed that the feminine and masculine is hard to grasp because it's first is the subjective experience of each of us and a sliding scale of these energies and always in comparison to something else. So, you know, um, so I think that where I'm coming, where I'm seeing myself more and more interested in this work and it has actually, it's, I wouldn't say three years ago I set out to do this, but it's emerging. It's becoming what I'm doing constantly. And and what's and um, what that is is the contrast of the energy that I feel and the energy that I see reflected. So I don't see the. So then I have to keep. Um, so I'll try to make that more clear. So for example, I'm very interested in cultural change, and I'm very interested in in conversations that belong to, to, let's say, the domain of systems thinking or the domain of, of like, uh, how do we make better school systems or how do we make better, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, humans are suffering. We're in, a, you know, in, in, in pain in some way. In, um, and I see that I want to participate in some conversations, but the ways of engaging in these conversations are don't invite the best what I have to offer, what I have to offer in, and, and what I say, when I say that is I'm never meaning just me, I'm meaning a certain expression of people, which I'm calling people that associate a lot of the, with the feminine. Um, so I can go, um, and I know guy that you're also familiar with development and I, I so, so occasionally I, I go in the, you know, concrete, uh, subtle or causal or whatever, but the, in, in the concrete way, my body and the way it shows up, my physiology is different than a male's physiology. So it can go even in the concrete and, and that shows up differently. So I have, so the way that my being relates to emotions, the way that emotions course through a female body monthly and, and the way that the world permeates me through emotions. And, and that is, that is something that is not um, valid. It's culturally we're afraid of emotions, and therefore we don't. We intellectualize. We stay in the domain of intellect, which I think it's good, but I think it backfires because the emotion. So we relate very intellectually driven by emotion in, let's say, in politic, polit in politics, or so the emotion is always there. I see it's always pervading all sorts of conversations, but it's not there. It's not there. We're not like, um, 
acknowledging there were humans in relationship with each other and and that domain is being left out which um I know that in your work guy with circling it's very present and so to me I'm curious I'm interested in how to set the stage how to support setting a stage in which in which dialogos or beautiful conversations can happen in which the different types of geniuses can also come out and not be um, shy away from not seeing that reflection, uh, not seeing that that's also okay. So that's that's one mm -hmm. of the, the the pieces that I might start with, and I'm sure we can we can you know go everywhere with it. Hopefully. Mm. Yeah. So, guy, feel free to respond to that if you like in terms of teeing up a bit of a, a question in response you're someone who's had just about as many conversations of a deep authentic touch between people as there is <laughs> you know i mean you're, you're probably on the leaderboard somewhere so yeah um, and so you know one of the reasons why i sort of adriana and I thought to talk to you and to sort of to dive into this discussion at all is because you do have this, you do have a capacity to, I think, engage um, multiple aspects of mind and body and heart mm -hmm. in a soul to soul relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious about whether, and, and we don't have to um, focus on only let's say how it is that the feminine might be disenabled in dialogue although that is you know i think extremely important certainly something adriana is presencing here there does seem to be a kind of participation which in certain mediums of conversation doesn't as easily find its way to the fore but even then, when we say find its way to the fore, perhaps that's mm -hmm. placing a kind of responsibility that would be inappropriate in some sense. Maybe there's a kinds of feminine expression, not all kinds, which are meant to be in some sense in a supportive context. And so to foreground and background, it's all beautiful and it's all contributing. So mm -hmm. it's quite a complex thing to even begin to presence. I'm just wondering in your experience in circling and then also in your experience um, as you've had now, you know, many conversations online and are certainly part of an evolving ecology of conversations that are seeking to bring into consciousness um, more of what it means to be humans together in our cultural moment. What's your experience been like um, when it comes to engaging the whole of the human being and is there anything you notice about um perhaps what adriana is touching on here that you find to be missing and or or, or not as not as um i wouldn't i wouldn't want to say welcome but is there something about how conversations happening maybe it's because of, maybe because it's online that is um you know, reducing possibility where it otherwise could increase possibility and ultimately um, create something more, more, more whole, more capable of drawing from potential, more inclusive in that way. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I, well, first I'll just say that, you know, Adriana, as you're, as you're sharing, I couldn't help but notice how in, ways that I'm sure is just second nature to you. Um, the very thing that you're talking about wanting, right, in to be opened up in, in, in dialogue, like with emotions in the sense of the feminine, right, having this, this place in these dialogues, right, as you said, to be, to be really human together, like in all the multifaceted, and like this, specifically, the, like the emotional realm, and have that be present and welcome and a part of it. Um, that you in some way demonstrated it just in your, just in this kind of way that it seemed to me that um, 
you were already flowing beyond your yourself in in just your expression like the way that you moved your hands like just the, the sense of the energy that was kind of com coming out there's a sense of like an overflowing sense to it so i i don't know i just right off the bat i just wanted to say i appreciated that um and it just it would make sense that you would have your eye on that right just just in the sense of just the way that you just I think probably naturally present I would imagine mm. that's that's the case um I let's see for me I think about this it's funny I have not I I, I went through a period like years ago of of really thinking in terms of masculine and feminine um but really have not in a long, long time. So this is kind of, this is kind of like, I'm sitting here going like, what do I actually think about that now? What is, how do I see that? Um, I can tell you that I would say, and I think I probably speak for a lot of men in dialogos, in these, in these deeply like philosophical, insightful conversations, right? especially when the logos catches. I think in some sense, it's maybe the closest that men get to, be, to experience birth. I think in those conversations, I think philosophy is one of, in, in philosophical conversations and the insights to be impregnated with them and to birth them. It's like it, in the love that happens between the interlocutors, this mutual, this mutual kind of sense of, you know, becoming the logos in some in some way, is connected to this experience of love. That's just, it's like everyone feels like they're the best person they've ever met, right? In in those moments, mm -hmm. and I think I have a feeling that it's probably one of the closest things that men get to experience of it's probably the closest we come to experience in birth in that way. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why men really flock to those conversations or really, really love them, right? And I think it's precisely because this, in some sense, it gives access to an experience of the feminine that's um, may be difficult for a lot of men there's something about that so i just that's one thing that just comes to mind is that is that i think one of the yeah that probably one of the reasons that men really 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 like philosophical conversations right and and especially especially in the way that we're doing it now where we're bringing a lot more attention to the dialogue and the process of the dialogue itself right and in some sense kind of letting go of the outcome or any kind of sense of, of there being a means to an end, but the, the, but the very process being the end in itself, right? And coming from that point, I think in some ways is a very, can probably very, be very seen as a, as a feminine process. Um, And so that I think a lot, it's, it's, yeah, now I think I haven't thought about it in these terms before, but it, it just, it, it just does make sense to me that mm. like in some ways, this is a place that men get to be experienced like, like a, dir a direct, a direct dose of the feminine. Mm. And I have to say, <laughs> we, we, we can barely take it. <laughs> like, it's like, it's powerful. Mm. I am, um, as I hear you, you speak, I'm, I'm reminded I've, you know, I've been playing with um, emergent conversations. I played a few years ago with friends before I even heard of Dialogos. I have neighbors and female neighbors, and we were playing with it with me every Friday and have these emergent conversations. And, and I, I, I get a sense deeply of what you're, you're pointing to the finding out together and and it's interesting because um 
the flow that I observe in these conversations that I had with these friends, they feel very, um, I don't, um, there's a qualitative difference. Um, it's, hmm. And I don't know, I'm trying to just, just try uh, to understand, but it feels to me, and I have watched uh, in preparation for this, I have watched a few conversations that you've had with a few different men and I can sense the the beauty and I can say the sh the shared joy and the sh shared almost ecstasy that you yeah. speak of um and um I think in my experience with these friends there was an experience of peaks peaks and valleys in some way I'll, I'll, um which I'm wondering if that's um more a component of uh the feminine and in female bodies and when you said mm -hmm. about birth I was thinking, you know, um, because when I had these experiences with these female friends, it was certainly joyous and 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 mm. ecstatic and and you know at times um, painful. Not personally, we were. It was there's a transpersonal component for sure. But yeah. the birth, when you exemplified birth, I was thinking, birth is for sure it's still today one of the most powerful experiences of my life but the pain to get through it and and i is um maybe that's a component of the feminine it, there is there is tremendous all these ecstatic rites of passages of the feminine so for example even if i get to birth and then let's say menopause different rites of passages in the female trajectory they they are permeated by pain so there is um there is thresholds that are, when you said we could almost not take it. And I was thinking, maybe that's a little bit of what I'm pointing to is like they demand a lot, like they require a lot of presence and a lot of surrender to go through these thresholds. And I, maybe that's the bit of the feminine that, um, that I'm saying um, it's, it's missing from culture in some way but i it's understandable because it's there is an intensity to it there is a there is a a, a request it's requesting something of, of us which is oh totally i it's funny to exactly you say that just the well one i'm i'm flooded with memories of of i've experienced I, i've been present for three births um two two of my children and then and then uh, I was supporting a friend of mine um, in hers and all three of them in, in unique ways, but equally intense. Like, like the, it, it, a couple of things. It's like the amount of pain that that looked to me and felt to her was so um, overwhelming, <laughs> right? But this way that all three women, it was kind of like this deep integrity, the way that they were with it. This, mm, like just this, this relationship with the pain. There's a, there's a feminine, it seems maybe that's one of the components of the feminine, right? Or where, where it comes out is this really, this rich relationship with pain, where it was kind of like, I remember the first, after the first birth, I walked away going like, I, uh, like, I do not know one man that would do that. Like, it, it, there was just such, a, there was such a sense of otherness and a respect, right, mm -hmm. for like a bow of that. There's something going on there and that her relationship with that pain and how much like dignity and integrity, mm -hmm. like she was with it, that was, Mm. Uh, awesome awful <laughs> right mm. in that sense you can kind of you can you can hear me struggle to kind of express it mm. but yeah totally totally mm. yeah so to link in the piece of what may or may not be present in different conversations you know, we can think about, uh, let's think about the most outrageous place of all. Let's think about um, like the Houses of Parliament, right? Where people are having dialogues, <laughs> debates, they're not even that. 
that are taking place in what would be considered from a foolish perspective but from the perspective of power importantly the very core of uh of of where of where a, a sort of an orientation of the culture is decided and one of the things you see immediately is that uh surrender is not really present there surrender is not allowed right that's that's not part of the parlance and surrender in general i think is often seen as a sign of weakness is seen as uh submitting to the victor and the surre- the person who surrenders is the person who loses and so what can take place i think in conversations let's say that are of a certain masculine disposition which is itself not a mature masculine is kind of uh, a representation of say one line of expression of it is a kind of conversation where you have um me versus you and they're kind of interesting maybe to watch if the people are articulate because you're going to get to see someone destroyed and maybe you can say in the in the best of it there's this uh this this clash of swords right clash of swords of truth and maybe one gets sheared away and you're left with the the last one standing and maybe there's aggression and there's a kind of violence and that's very exciting to watch it's the kind of thing that might get a lot of engagement online you know in some sense there's a kind of reputation on the line and so it plays into dynamics of status and you get to see who the champion is that might rise to the top and so you know we only have to think about algorithms and what they might favor as well as just the sociological dynamics of human beings to think why it might be just to name a few reasons why some conversations why some types of interactions end up being viewed um more than others uh it's certainly the case that the kind of um let's i i think of um um well it's even it's difficult because there is a beauty i think in there is a beauty in a, in a kind of combat but maybe only when that combat combat itself is nested within something that is worth being in combat in pursuit of and so we're already in that sense implicitly putting in in the background surrender to some transcendent ideal some ideal that might be binding the very reason to be in that kind of combat together and i don't think there is anything beautiful about the kind of violence that is in some sense utterly destructive of the other in some sense a very kind of rip almost in well it's the rip in mutual being in some important sense so yeah that kind of surrender as a um as a really being open to the other's insight even a really being open to the other and what they are expressing to be born along by that to accept it within and to be moved by that this is the kind of thing that is you know a constitutive step in really meaningful discussions and maybe from the perspective of some people to do that is felt to be antithetical to the image the identity the success they even wanted to have in stepping forward and speaking forward and so it seems to be a profoundly important um step of maturity a cultivated capacity to be able to surrender in this much deeper way in in this way that in fact opens to broader understanding and can open to the perspective of another so this is how i sort of am i'm thinking about it as i'm listening to you both i'm kind of curious adriano if if that if that feels about right to you as as some initial thoughts on what surrender can mean in this some um, more more uh more mature sense Hmm. Um are you tying this with the masculine and feminine or where, wherever it goes? Yeah, where wherever mm. it goes. I mean there's I mm. there's I think there's we could use the word to be uh, mm. reflective of argue, you know, the words almost fail because there's a 
there can be a a kind of surrender you could associate with what I was referring to as kind of mm. masculine and and then but it, but I would want to distinguish that from it's kind of surrender in the sense of of loss and losing where mm. where where loss becomes something um, mm. that's kind of almost zero sum rather than loss as a kind of openness to mm. new life mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, I, the, the reason I asked is because, you know, when you were talking about the combat and I was thinking, you know, the, the, the beauty of actually the masculine agency, which is present in me now, I mean, to come here, you know, I'd say I, I'm igniting my masculine or to, to, to use these names, which feels very different than the surrender. So the, the masculine, like the courage that to pierce through despite my fear and I'm going to pierce through and, and, um, because I think it's valuable to my community, to my to my people, you know. So I think that that's a very masculine quality in the surrender, but it's more agentic in which the feminine surrender um, is feels there's a qualitative difference in which, for example, if I tried let's use birth again, but even now as I journey into perimenopause and I see the the forces taking over me. <laughs> Um, there's what's required of me is not that is a different capacity, which is not piercing through is a, it's a melting into and, and there is, there's more that's available with that melting into so it's a different quality and, um, and I think that um, I think that to add to and maybe tying a little a few pieces together, um, I heard in a conversation that you guy were having and i think you were having with um not sure who it was but it, it tied mysticism i think and um dialogos and and there was one of you mentioned the the i thou i thou making sacred and that yeah. really struck me because i think that if i'm gonna distill the 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 why i'm having these conversations it feels because i want to remind remember that it is i thou the feminine forgotten because it is the realm of the private it is the quiet it is the background and yet it has lost touch so much in our fast-paced culture it's almost like chinese whispers that have started over here with sacredness and over here we forgot it was sacred and we forgot and it's like i so i, I notice emotion arising and it's and if I'm in a serious conversation and emotionalizes, it's often dismissed as something less. And, and I'm here sitting on the, <laughs> igniting my masculine to say, this is not less. We forgot, we have forgotten that birth is sacred. We have forgotten, we have forgotten many things. And, and I feel that to contribute fully to, to, to the society, um, women and men but i'm saying women because a lot of my friends female friends forgot as well they forgot the sacred even though they they have it they live it they also put in the basket of less than because it's being reflected to them for so long so then so then acting in the world from that place it, it's 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 um I, I can see that what comes out is is um, much less than what would have been possible if that was seen as I thou because it is, it, it, it's it, it's just we 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 forgot the way that I there is this um there was this um, sentence that Daniel Schmartenberger said ages ago but it stuck with me and he said when we place more value into a dead whale than into a live whale we know we're lost. And and I and it's from the same. That's the same essence that mm. I'm speaking of. Is like it feels to me that in relationship to the value of the feminine, we we lost as culture um, yeah. the capacity to see and and value it. So so then um, in mm. that so in relationship to that, I noticed that what's requiring of me um, is not the softening of the surrender that is more of, is more of, a, of a new type of surrender that's foreign to me and it's scary 
because it's like it's put it it's make um it's my masculine agency coming out and going no I'm gonna make a stand this feels important and it's it's not my um default outside <laughs> in public conversation so so it's all of that um I, I I said a lot of things so I don't know if um I don't even know if I answered you Tim but I just felt like bringing this yeah so the I that so the uh the sense of the connecting with the I thou for for you when you say when you say thou what do you mean um I that? mean I mean consciousness got like beautiful yeah. just um in the biggest sense it's just th there's no words but there's just that in which yeah. requires my reverence and my um utter yeah. presence and yeah. which which i um i think we forgot in relationship to everything not just the feminine but i'm making a point of the feminine because um even the industrialization of birth there's so many concrete expressions of this forgetfulness in which yeah. um a hurting concretely um people and um and i don't think it's a meanness i don't think anybody is i don't see patriarchism as a mean person doing something onto me or i see as this collective forgetfulness which i'm a part of and i forget too and i and it's it takes effort to remember and go like oh we we this dance is together we need to dance together and if if um you know, if, for example, politics has taken a, sh a form in which I feel intimidated to participate, I yeah. representing that quality of being, then, okay, instead of me shying away, no, we have to go, we have to do something or, or more this igniting forth of like, um, bringing it out, I suppose, birthing or. Yeah. Totally. I, one of the things where I felt a lot when you were you were talking is when you talked about when you were describing the or attempting to describe the thou right and there's something indescribable about it right and there was kind of a moment where you're moving your hands like that and and then you said the word reverence and I I that the that to to um, to be in the presence of that, which the response, the only appropriate response in some sense is reverence, right? To me, that is something that's getting close to something like surrender, right? And and there, I loved what you said too about, about this forgetfulness, right? This, because it's always, I've noticed with myself that one is whenever that encounter happens, right? It's like usually it's like you have, you know, maybe like a half breath notice before like you're struck by the, by the, uh, I think even Buber calls it a, um, the encounter, the I thou encounter, right? Where there is this quality for me where I find myself struck by it and in it and there's a there's something about just the visceral the visceral sense of being in the presence of when that which is thou and you right unfolds before me and the i right that that the i that comes with that like the i because if i see you as thou it's a different i that must also take place right he talks about you know i thou is it can only be spoken as one word and all that that terminology it uses but that forgetfulness has this quality of that that whenever i experience that it's always this experience of like oh yeah i forgot about that like oh yeah there's something about there's something about that experience of of luminous kind of the ineffable right when it gleams and shines forth but then withdrawals at the same time that whole that whole experience 
it's it's there is this quality of where it's 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 one of those things where it it can't be represented right so even when i remember it i think i'm thinking about those experiences right as i talk about it but actually when i go to experience it i'm going to i'm going to be like oh when i was thinking about that i was not thinking about that at all this right this kind of remembering of something so real and undeniable that's like more real than real itself right and so there's this quality of 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 memory and remembering right those those experiences of those in, that encounter but it's interesting like that forgetfulness right in that moment of remembering right in itself it's it seems like it seems like something about when that opens up there's a there's a responsiveness or a conformity that comes that that calls forward where it's almost like it, i get this sense where it's it's everything that we're talking about is implicitly answered right in those moments right in those moments um what does it what do those moments ask of us mm. because it, cause I, I i i i i hear what you're saying and that there's a there's an, an answer occurs i'm just wondering how to I'm, I'm curious if you if you take yourself into what is asked of you in that moment what responses are there for you because we participate in that because we damn well know that we can um, we can do things in a flow which don't seem to continue the flow right we can fall over yeah and um and we can whether out of immaturity whether it's a kind of whether it's a kind of pain whether we want to speak about a kind of wounding we can we can meet the sacred and we can we can shy away and sometimes we can do sometimes we can do worse yeah yeah well i think one of the things i think what you're what you're pointing out adriana about what we forget and what you're wanting to call right is it there's something there's something about a um they call they, it's like they call for it to be something like a room making for however that is that wants to unfold right that's the that's the reference is the sense of like if you if if that's present and it comes through by you like your head splitting open and three other heads come out and like whack me with the sword or if it comes forward as like a deep deep like subtle quietness there's something about um there's something about those moments where there's where i think maybe this is what what i'm imagining what you what you're pointing to Adriana is this room for all these different expressions right hmm. and uh room making in some sense and in, in fact that's kind of the challenge of those of those oftentimes the luminous moments right those moments of deep intimacy or profundity um that that they how deeply and profoundly can i be with with it and hmm. being with it right oftentimes requires me i would imagine some some sense needs i need to be open to be changed by it mm. right mm. then yes yes and also that 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 touches on another conversation that i heard you having which i was excited about because i a lot of the retreats i run are influenced by uh, bill torbert's work so i heard you i heard a little mm. bit of a conversation you had with bill and oh cool and um, in that conversation, yeah. he, he was talking about um, single, double, and triple loop learning. And as you said, like the the 
the, the availability to be changed, like how risky it is and how, and, and um, so, you know, single loop being just like changing behavior or, or triple, uh, double loop changing the, the, the cognition about it and the triple loop changing where the consciousness comes from in, in relationship to that. And it's hard, it's a hard thing. And, and I was, in relationship, and that's why the feminine can be such a slippery thing to talk about in some ways, because, um, and I really appreciated what you started the conversation saying, I don't, I haven't even thought about it much. And I noticed that a lot of my male friends, even like really wise and open, uh, don't think about it much um, because my, my assumption is that because the contrast with reality is less in some way. I mean, of course there's a contrast, but um, I was sharing with a friend of mine just recently that being cyclical, so the nature of having a menstrual cycle in which your consciousness is being shifted con con continuously. So the, the interaction with reality is shifting. So in, from some perspectives, that would be, this is insecure or this is unsure, or this is confused, or this is, which, which is, and I can see, because the piercing nature of a certainty in a body that cycles doesn't exist in the same way. So, 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 so the way I inhabit reality, and a lot of my female friends, especially the ones that make, made peace with that bit of themselves and really thrive in that, so they thrive in that in their own expression, but they still experience re resistance from the outside world because that's not seen as a valid lenses for yeah. modernity, let's say, for how we are, for, for the inhale and exhale of this expression. So, um, mm. so I guess the pointing to is, is going, so for example, when you were mentioning birth, and I was, I was just reflecting, this is a thought that uh, came to me as, as, um, as an insight one time of like, ah, oh, I don't think cesareans, like, you know, in some um, context, let's say that a woman is reconnecting to her body and she's really feeling the aliveness and, and the beauty of, of the potential of birthing naturally, let's say. And it, it has pain in it, it, tremendous pain involved. And of course, if you're not in the right set and setting, it, that makes it so unbearable, so mm. dangerous that the, the, mm. the intervention that a mind that is kind and, and wants to intervene to what I don't feel, but I see and I have agency. So let's say I'm creating a cesarean section as a solution to a problem. And even the mind that creates that is a mind that is not in deep connection to where the source of the problem is. The source of the problem, of course we can still have cesarean sections and it's still a solution when it's necessary. But the source of the problem is to my view, our incapacity as humans to rest in pain and melt into it as a potential for more consciousness. And, um, that results in actual birth, but also in conversation, it results in other births as well. But it's if I take that bit of me out, then I'm only giving to the world the bit of me that is linear, which is less interesting. And that's why I'm trying to make it visible that a bunch of us has other bits that could contribute, contribute to the healing of our world and the, the sharing of conversations and ideas and, and um, the, what it means to be together in, in different ways and expressions. Yeah. I just noticed when you were talking about the, um, the cycle and the, all, everything that you just said, that there's, <laughs> I kept feeling a sense of just wanting to serve. Like, that's what was kind of, was, and I felt like that, that felt like a really, like you could say a masculine response in me is this sense of, I think it had to do with, similar to what I was talking about before, that sense of respect, 
right? For those cycles, for that relationship to pain, for whatever that is, is incredibly at one level, I think kind of coming from the masculine part of me, like when that's, when, when this is open, right? There is a sense of like, I just want to serve that. Like, I want to make a lot of room for that. I want to be super, super clear. Let's like get the set and setting. Let's like, let's not inhibit anything. Let's have all the colors, like the whole thing. If you need to yell at me, yell at me, right? Like there's that sense of it. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think if I go, what would be the contracted sense of it? Like mm -hmm. the same masculine, but in a contracted sense of it. It just seems all of a sudden that the feminine looks, well, one, a combination of it's just scary and like a trap, mm. right? a trap that like um, I'm not going to be able to win or that I need to get control of or I need to mm. like in, so, in, some, in some sense, right? And I think it has to do, I'm imagining, it's like the invert of that respect. It's like, whatever the opposite of that respect is, it's like a, a different relationship to the fear. Mm. That's what I noticed is like, just tracking my own emotions as you mm. were talking. And I, and I love hearing, um, I love hearing you say bo honor both, um, because, um, yeah, I, I mean, like first when you said, I want to serve that, I noticed like, ah, oh, that would be so nice to like, I just do the relaxation and like, imagine yeah. board meetings and, and banks and uh, whatever, like uh, the amount of women. <laughs> The amount of women that I have seen shying away and hiding from the bosses and hiding from the colleagues and hiding bits of them. And I'm like, where does this energy go? Like it goes, like it just, and so like, this is creative potential. Like, what are you doing with that? It's becoming like a hidden. So that excites me. Like, ah, imagine, I'm excited to see financial systems that have like the, the creativity of the feminine and the masculine designing it or you know, engineering that looks like that or whatever it is. So it excites me. And I, yeah. and I also simultaneously honor the scary nature of it because it is it, 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 it like, when I think about it in the microcosm of like, you know, my partner and me and, and when like the microcosm of relationships and, 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 and the feminine and masculine dynamic and, and in the, in the larger context in which you know, it is much harder to understand labor when you go like, I have no idea when this baby can be born. I have to just make room and make space and it can be born in like two weeks. It can last three days. It can last half an hour. It's scary for the mind. Like the mind can't understand these expressions of the feminine, like birth and death and, and menopause, because menopause, the transition is the same as 10 years. And when is it that I'm going to stop cycling? And what happens? So all of that, this um, it requires a lot. And it's, I don't think we're, we have built um, the conditions for it. You know, it's like the education system prepares us to have answers and the whole thing from the get go doesn't make us sit well with uncertainty so I totally get that it's like it's it's scary and it requires a lot and um and also there is the time to 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 be in relationship with the pain and there is the time that you go you know what and this time I'm gonna take this Panadol and take you know so so the understanding um um of, of, how, of how much it is that we can take as well and, and the honoring of that and, and what it requires of each of us as we grow our capacities. Um, but I think that, I think that I, I can't see, it's like when I think of like, I'm, uh, you know, if I, if I sit with Charles Eisenstein's words, like the most beautiful world, our hearts know it's possible. If I sit with that, I can't see a fragmented world. Like I can't see it being created just from the place where we're trying to create, even in the loftiest 
most beautiful expressions if it doesn't include bits that I feel are missing because they're not even um, noticing that they can play. They can play in this arena. You know, that's also part of of the world, of earth, of 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 what we're doing here together. Yeah, 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 totally. Tim, what if you just you got hit by something somewhere in there? You went, I noticed you would. Well, it's <laughs> a thought that's very much still completing. But when I consider, and I've never been present to a birth, a, a childbirth, but I do know that to be present with it would mean being present with the pain that is there, with the criticality that's there. And that's the kind of thing that we could imagine is the perfect living instance of a man being overwhelmed by the pain of the feminine. And how can I be dragged? Like, I can't do anything. <laughs> I ain't birthing the thing. And yet, there's something to offer. Now, the other thing, one of the other things <laughs> that seems to happen, uh, you know, the word push comes along. And that's quite present in the sort of the, the as, a, as a meme in culture, you know, you hear, you watch TV shows and you hear, you know, push and there's a, and so there's a pushing through the pain, right? So there's a being with the pain, but for the birth to happen, there's a pushing. And that pushing, that, ex that expansion then, that kind of um, sending something into the world to live, but to die. And that to die piece would seem to be if we can integrate this this masculine metaphor type energy in there there's this whenever we go into the feminine it seems like the most appropriate treatment of that dynamic returns then to the masculine mode and the most appre um, appropriate treatment of that dynamic eventually turns to the feminine mode and we have this expansion and contraction and so i was sort of reflecting on the um what it is to be open to men and women, to the masculine and feminine, and um, in some sense to be present to the vulnerability, maybe the, um, the, the, the not knowing, the seeking, the, the sort of the emotion that is a sign of that there is matters of deep importance and care that might not yet have been brought into clarity. We have to attend to them. We have to be with them. We can't just overlook them. And what would be that right moment, and of course there's many and they come in all shapes and sizes, to then ask and it's almost, and, I, and perhaps we can say it's an invitation. Uh, and I can certainly, you know, I, I know what it is to invite something forth in someone, to invite that expression forth, to invite that, 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 that crafting. And yet, I, uh, I also wonder, like, just in the in the context of that birth dynamic, there seems that there's something very. I don't know if invitation is quite the right way only to think about it because um it's it's more there's such a criticality and it's sort of the the you know the the, the the what you're stepping into adriana the the um having gotten to know you and feeling the dedication and the and the importance and sharing that sense of importance with you uh maybe we could look you know i sort of invited this conversation today but I'm also, not, you know, this isn't just, this isn't coming from me. There's a sense in which there's a facilitation of an um, emergence that, and, and, and a stepping forth that you're making that I'm sort of present to. And so to answer your question, Guy, in terms of where I was, I think part of me is just, um, is just dwelling with what it is to, um, in some sense, uh, be present be to the be in some sense to the side to know one is not controlling in that process and yet 
and the, and yet is somehow extremely important there in a supportive role i think there's a deep there's something in there that for men it would is a profound learning um i've heard you know it expressed before that when people think of wanting to create a space maybe for women or create a platform for women to speak or something like this there's a concern that well you know you've created this stage is that going to become a another cell you know you're holding the space for it you're trapping me in there you know that's not quite that's obviously not not quite right um and so yeah these are this is where i'm sort of this is what i'm dwelling with i suppose Yeah, no. I wonder about what, like, what has been your experience of engaging in these kinds of conversations? Like, how is it? Like, have you, where have you felt the most free, mm -hmm. right, in the ways that you're talking about? Like, where, mm -hmm. where have you felt the most not free in the ways that you're talking about? And have you noticed, like, what are the conditions? Mm -hmm. make those that possible if you've noticed like patterns and because i'm yeah. imagining you've been engaging in these kinds of conversations and stuff like this for a bit mm. yes um yeah thank you i appreciate the question i uh, um i think so for example very surprisingly because the recording is on and i imagined i would feel tense but surprisingly, I'm very relaxed. And I attribute that to Tim's holding. So I, I know Tim. I know his dedication to crafting voice. I know the care. Like, I, I don't know Tim just from listening to his podcast and projecting an intelligent young man or whatever images I project on top of that. I know his heart, I know what he dedicates to voice craft. So I know all of that, that's informing my trust. Then I have um, I know also a bit about your work and circling. And so I think these two components and the way, of course I could know that and then both of you show up in a different way and that not open me. But uh, I, I think that, I guess that I what I'm experiencing here is the potential for a lot of like um if if there is um i don't know a sliding scale or if there is an amount of how much we show ourselves in spaces i think that i experience a lot of openness here to a lot of um my me so part of that is also is this my daughter's alarm call might be my daughter's alarm clock and I have to turn it off. Hold on. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Kind of took me to a different place. But um, yeah, so I I guess also the the knowing the context of the conversation. So for example, knowing that I'm allowed, so there is an allowing, and I'm saying in very commas, doing a gesture with my hands for people to listen, that I'm allowed to bring things in here as themes or topics that in some other context would be maybe taboo so as soon as i know that some things are not allowed if they are part of my experience then i'm, I'm already leaving a lot of things out and and for some conversations that might be totally okay because it might be irrelevant but in some contexts, i noticed that it is important but i'm constantly having to frame that and that it takes a different shape I, and, and and I think I just wanted to add one thing I, I don't know if that's how it happened uh, uh, when I saw that you ran something that was dialogos with circling so I'm imagining I'm imagining that circling with dialogos is a little bit of what I think is an invitation for dialogos with women <laughs> with the feminine because uh, when I see and I love the conversations that you have in dialogos I I love ab abstract thinking and I, I could see myself being in a place of, of, of joy in these conversations. However, I noticed that there is something and it seems to be something that I noticed for 
friends of mine, female friends of mine, um, in which the personal or the there is something like it's almost like entering the a beautiful space together. There is the entrance point, like we need to enter somewhere, and the personal and the experiences they 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 relax me into abstraction. If yeah. the conversations go straight from hello sure. to abstraction, to me, I, I it feels I don't I don't feel quite right. So I think that yeah. that's what I notice. Yeah. You know what you're saying totally mirrors what so like in in the dialogue the circling of the dialogue's course um, is a whole layering of of practices right kind of in 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 their you know their set each practice is is logically a progression of the next so they build on each other and the last thing is dialectic in the dialogos mm -hmm. um, so there's mindfulness and then there's circling. So we spend about three hours of just intimacy practice, right? Just kind of doing exercises where all we're doing is we're sharing what we're noticing, being with each other and, and progressively mutual modes of, of disclosure, right? And, and openness to intimacy. And, and that process going three hours of that, right? Where you get this, you get this um, horizontal, right, reciprocal open, openness. Then when we go into dialect and dialogos, it's like, it's as if we take that, that intimacy, just like what you're talking about, right? Of like, yeah, like I'm a person, you're a person. In fact, being with you right now, I just like, I disclose more of myself than I, than I even knew about and you saw it more deeply, right? And, and mut this mutual sense of, of, of verbose kind of like, um, a verbose voluptuous vulnerability, right? In everyone's being. And then we take that horizontal intimacy and it's almost like we go, we, we take it and we go into a verticality. Mm -hmm. And that, that circling beforehand, um, one of the things I've noticed is in the course, what it seems, what it seems to do, well, all the practices, everything from the mindfulness and the philosophical contemplation, all of the things that we do, you can feel it come out in that when people come out of the the last the last practice, you know, the dialectic and the dialogos, which could be, you know, are the are the conversations that are that are can be the most heady in a certain sense. Hmm. People kind of come out of it and they're like, their eyes are dilated. <laughs> Right, mm -hmm. they're they're talking about the experience of the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Like the it it's it's the, they'll talk about what they got, but it's mm -hmm. so clear that the real value of the whole thing was the experience that they just had together, that it, that awareness of process, right? And I think you're right, just like what you were what you're referencing that it going personal first mm. like connecting in the in the horizontal reciprocal way right the, the, and being intimate this way first um i think it just it opens up our nervous system in a, mm. in, a in a profound way that seems to be a, a way that like when you point it to god let's say or you point it to some abstraction or you point it to there's a there's a affinity mm. between those two realms thus mm. and this didn't hit me until after the first dialogos and all of a sudden it kind of hit me between the eyes philosophy mm. philia sophia philia is the form of it's basically philia is the is is the love of friendship mm -hmm. right it's, it's the it's the intimacy of fellowship mm. right and it's sophia means wisdom and so in the very word philosophy, those two are wedded. And the first word is philia, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and those two together just make the musicality of the dialogue sing in, mm. in the way that you're talking about. So I really appreciate what you said. That's mm. that like over and over has been my experience in, in, in the courses that we've been doing. Mm.
I wonder, do you ever experience um, that um, for some men, I know, I know some men that are really comfortable in abstract thoughts straight away, that for them to go into the circling bit would be the, the hard bit. And, and yeah. but I imagine, do you, even if that happens, is there still the softening? Do you still experience the softening um, after? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, it's, it's this sense of, uh, well, one, I'd say for some of, for some of the, the people, they've, ne they've never touched in on that intimate space with somebody before, right? Mm -hmm. Just the, and of course that involves, I think kind of implicitly a, like anxiety, right? Tolerating a certain amount of anxiety, right? To have that kind of personal volunteer disclosure to you. But when it's met, right? Mm -hmm. with, with a reciprocal disclosure, right? And, a, and an openness. And you could feel that. Um, there's just an opening that I know that you're familiar with. It's just like, you can see it in their cells, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're you know, they're kind of flooded with, you know, all the, all the good hormones, you mm -hmm. know, in a cer certain sense. But yeah, you're right. Um, and I think I know that that's changed in talking with a, a, a number of, of the participants. I think we've had, I don't know, about 400 people go through it so far. And, and um, in talking with the participant, like a number of the participants talk about that now is that they're like, yeah, we don't, I don't, I won't, I won't do a, like a philosophical dialogue until we get present first with each other, mm. right? It's like kind of something got anchored in there, yeah. Hmm. I'm reminded, I'm um, sorry to my really when I hear you, I was just gonna say that I'm reminder of transcend and include. <laughs> That's the inclusion bit seems to be the circling or the person, you know, or the let's totally transcend, but let's include because it feels important and absolutely. Mm. And then it's also, you know, in, in some sense, because there's because there's that uh you know, most conversations have this has have, have like a like a um, a uh, triangular structure to it. So like, there's me, there's you, and then there's what we're talking about. And I think most people talk about connection is when when there's some commonality with the about, and then the connection you could say happens through that. But there's a there's another way where where where. And I think this is, I would imagine this is what you could call a, a real feminine kind of space. It's like where you, you, you kick out the about and you, the about becomes what's happening right now with us speaking in the moment. And it's really interesting. Like the moment I, the moment I remove the about and I just become present and speak like to you in the way that, that you're affecting me and that becomes the topic if you will mm. the, it, it's interesting the moment i do that there's a it's like a different dimension a different mm. dimension open right mm. things become more alive i have less i, I don't know what's what's going to happen next i definitely don't know what's going to happen after i get done saying that all of this right in that mm. that that ride um i think is really particularly can be very very scary for men like in a big way, unfamiliar. But when they, when they experience it and they touch it, there's a, there's a sense of a familiarity, right? Of feeling that feeling and knowing that that's possible and just the opening of that horizon, right? And experiencing that just one time makes a difference, just knowing that that's possible in that way. Hmm. Beautiful. So this was scheduled for 90 minutes or so. And so we only have about 10 minutes left. And I, I do want to be respectful of that. So I can hear a guy behind that, uh, that magical setting on the Acropolis looking out into the canyon there. I think I did hear a baby in the background at one point. So I, I must imagine that, that your life is full of a whole bunch of <laughs> different happenings right now behind you. My life is full of femininity, believe me. 
<laughs> yeah. little cycles and things bursting and mm. mood down and yes ton, tons of it yeah <laughs> well i um i'm really grateful to you both because there's something in recording these and i know guy this is something you know you've had quite an experience of now over these last years and adriana beginning to have more so there's a sense in which turning the recording button on is to in some sense artificially move into the thing which you so beautifully just articulated guy which can only really be met in a kind of um in a i used the word humility the other day it's a humility of coming into presence with what actually is right don't get too far ahead of yourself you know let's join in the here and now and move from there and turning the recording button on it's sometimes like oh the here and now here it is here it is for you <laughs> and um it's a it's a funny thing it's it's a it, it it does make the process something of a um a leap and um so it's nice to leap with you both and there are further questions i have further uh maybe I'd, I'd, and, and i and i sense their loops which if they're open won't be possible to close i am kind of wondering about what the um uh, we've sort of articulated there how a dialogos conversation can launch after stepping into intimacy in the present with each other. I would be curious about your observations of when um, remaining in intimacy only what can be the resistances that perhaps sometimes uh, the feminine feels to then taking a more vertical view where um, things are in some sense brought to a point. I'm curious about what the failure to launch in that sense might look like. I don't know if we have too long to explore that, but maybe Adriana, mm. if this is something that you've noticed in yourself in, in conversations mm. you've been a part of that don't have this aspect. Mm. I mean, in some ways, I can say that I notice. Um, so I, I've been a part of and I held many women only spaces, for example, which are very luscious and they have a lot of amazing things to them. And yet they lack something that I was seeking. So it's not it's not a, the role of the women only spaces um, or women's circles, let's say, or um, that's not the role. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm dreaming a, a, a different trajectory with women only spaces to to facilitate for that, because um, um, I, I feel that there's a, a few different things that happen. So one, it is that the feminine um, is real. So women are relational. The feminine is hidden in the woman. And then, so there is a lot of components that bring you in. And when you have a lot of women together, you know, and also the voice, uh, occasionally, a lot of the times in women-only spaces, even giving voice, even being met by going, because it's so hidden. And a, a, a lot of the times it's so counter-cultural, the experiences and not met, that a lot of the time there is healing. And the purpose I have come to, understand is the purpose for women circles is to heal which i think is a very very important part of it but to say the why i have the impulse to come to to spaces like voicecraft and why have i been seeking that in the past you know two and a half years and have been spending a lot of the, my time in places that are more abstract and a lot of the time more male dominated or that ignite the masculine in me um it is almost like um, this desire, I suppose, um, of of marrying the both, the masculine and feminine. I mean, in me, but in um, because you're, you're talking about him, I can see that we can stay only in a loop of emotional um, catharsis or, uh, catharsis or uh, processing and. And I don't want to say that that's a bad thing because for a lot of people that's tremendously healing and that's 
and and I think that there are the spaces that need to afford the 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 space for that combination in which you have the the safety and that your humanity is there. We're not taking your humanity out, and we're not taking um, and there's a lot of that that we need to bring in in the sense that. I don't even think that men and women understand that we inhabit completely different bodies and that we process reality different. So I don't, I don't think we're there yet. So I think that there is a lot of projection, um, imagination, be, uh, partially for women's fault because this is secret women's business. We don't come out saying it, but also because of all the things that I spoke about, it's private, there's shame involved often, there's so much in it. And it's also, just sacred, there's a lot of stuff to unpack. But the reason of bringing these out is like, uh, it, it's like what you did with the Dialogos and Circling um, guy, but in some ways, uh, in larger contexts, in some ways going, how can we, you know, how is it possible? How can we create solutions that for different problems that come from 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 that place? And I think that, um, I was, I was, so for me, I, I was tired of being in, in only in one realm. So for me, it felt nurturing to come to male dominated spaces. But then I was like, oh, I noticed that I have to explain a lot about me here, because if I don't explain, it'll probably be misunderstood. So I have to almost put subtitles like I'm crying, but that, this doesn't mean this. So what I, uh, because I wanted to to validate it as a as a piece of content, like it's actually good information here for us all to learn how to dance this dance together. And it's not that I, um, you know, um, I often see my um, women friends' interests being not the interest of a lot of my male friends. So the boxes are very separate, you know. The the and I'm going a lot of these interests would actually benefit over here. So how can we learn to to, to see what we, each other we, we need? So I think I, I responded, I don't know if exactly what you asked, but yeah, that's what came. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's, there's further, there's further to be explored there. So this has been uh, really lovely to be here with you both. And Guy, nice to see you again after a while. I think I say this every time, but I hope it's not this long next time, uh, until the next time. And it's just an invitation away. Uh, yeah, wishing you really well. And I, I wasn't aware that you had a, uh, a second child that was born. I must have missed yeah. that on Facebook. So wonderful. Congratulations to that. That's a beautiful Thank mate. And um, Thank you. yeah, if you have any final words, then please go ahead. But otherwise to... Uh, just say thank you to you both. Yeah, absolutely. Nice to meet you and really, really nice conversing with you. And uh, I love the musicality of the, of the dialogue and I may it just be the beginning. Yeah, it was a pleasure. It was, thank you for, for bringing this to fruition, for birthing this, Tim. And yeah, thank you guys. Yeah. Mm. Oh, thank you. love. Thank you for watching. If you value this work and want to see more of it, please support Voicecraft Media Creation at patreon.com/voicecraft.